So the last time I did my $50 water cooling loop video, I actually failed in that the temperatures were just too bad where the CPU was overheating. This time around, however, I'm going to vlog the whole process of what I've done to fix this water cooling loop and also tell you guys the temperatures this time around. So last time the water loop failed, the $50 water loop. However, this time around, I'm going to be sanding this back until it's pretty much as flat as it can get. And then I'm going to be measuring out the sockets on this motherboard and also this GPU and then making up some custom brackets for it. So we're going to give this round two and let's give it a shot. All right, so we're just gonna pause right here and we can see by looking at this how just convex shaped these coolers really are. Now convex is pretty much a terrible thing because the center is gonna be the furthest away from the actual heat spreader. So we're gonna keep sanding this until the whole thing's shiny and that means it'll be relatively flat. So now we're going to cut out the brackets for the uh, water blocks. Check out my V-motor earmuffs. Alright, so I've marked out the blocks now for drilling and I've also got these 3mm screws from the hardware store and they can, you can see here they fit perfectly so that's really good. So we're all good to go now with round phase 2 of this. Alright, so we're just going to empty the loop now because I need to measure up the blocks so I can cut it through the brackets. So let's get that done. Okay, so looking inside this block here you can see that there's like no fins really, there's just these little bumps. And I mean that's pretty terrible for the performance, but we'll do our best to get this thing working. Okay, so we've measured out the blocks now and we're going to start drilling. Thank you. 
All right, so I was filling up the water loop and it's just leaking at two points and that being the points where this crap eBay clear tubing is connected. So I'm gonna change that for the engine hose stuff and then we're gonna get back to it. So rather than emptying the loop out, I'm just tipping it upside down. Now, since it was the bottom point, as you can see there, the water's cleared out of this pipe. So I'll be able to hopefully hot change it Though I seriously do not recommend doing this. But, you know, I just want to save some time because I'm tired. I don't want to get my ass to bed. So let's do it. So our loop is now pretty much full. I'm just going to close it off and then shake the case around to get any air bubbles out and we hopefully should be good to go. So all this time, women have been keeping us out of the loop on how to use a hairdryer. So there we have it, the $50 water cooling loop is now officially working, though the amount of time I spent to get this thing working just simply was not worth it, and I couldn't recommend this to anyone still, because those temperatures are still a little bit high, especially for water cooling. I mean, the GPU was going up to around 55 to 60 degrees, depending on the ambience, and then the CPU was around that as well. Though keep in mind, though, a good air cooler, something like a $30 Animax T40, would do just as well as this CPU co uh, water cooling loop. And when I checked the radiator temperatures as opposed to the CPU temperatures, for instance, we were still getting radiator temperature of about 35 degrees, which is really good for a radiator, and then contrast that to the actual CPU core temps, we can see that the blocks still weren't efficient enough and they still weren't picking up enough heat. And that was probably due to the design. I mean, when I got a close glimpse in there, I could see that there was pretty much just these little bumps. And that's pretty much pathetic for a water cooling block. So anyway, the water cooling blocks, they do connect properly now to the GPU die and the CPU. It's just that the temps are still a little bit low. I also have to pretty much call this a $60 loop now because I had to spend some extra money on materials like bolts and wood ply and sandpaper and whatnot. So there it is, guys. The concept does work, though honestly, uh, for what it's worth, uh, yeah, I guess it was just a lot of fun and a big learning process. But what I'm trying to say is when it comes to water cooling, you just can't skimp on some of those parts unless you want really mediocre performance, even for the money. And so that's what we had this time around. Those CPU blocks, even though I sanded them back, they're still garbage. That pump is still a little bit weak. And also things like that clear tubing that you get off eBay, be very careful with that stuff. I mean, some of the stuff that I got was just straight up junk. However, the radiator, the reservoir, and the uh, you know car hosing was pretty good and I can recommend that stuff. Though so stay tuned for the upgraded edition of this water loop where I will be spending a budget of around 100 to 150. Still haven't decided yet, but hopefully I'll get much better results next time around. So I look forward to giving you guys that video. Also, as opposed to the build, I will be doing a, a showcase of that build very soon, even though it will be pretty much the worst price performance used build I've done on the channel. It doesn't matter. I've got to show the negatives just like I show the positives. I guess that's something that is a theme around here. I don't want to just be like, hey guys, we're winning all the time. Uh, no, this was a big loss and it was just one of those builds that you kind of just want to put in the closet and just forget about it. Uh, forget you ever made it and don't tell anyone about it, <laughs> even though I'm telling you guys about it. Probably wondering about the overclocks on this platform, and they weren't that high, and that was due to another reason to do with the actual memory that I used, and it took me a long time to figure this out, but essentially, I got hosed from an eBay seller selling 800 megahertz memory as 667 megahertz, and on this platform, it's crucial to have that 800 megahertz memory if you want to overclock the LGA 771 Xeons. 
The GPU, however, that was just bound by the silicon lottery. I did manage to get around a 10% overclock on that. And even then it was running really well with temps going around about max to 60 degrees, which is pretty good. And I was happy with that. So anyway, guys, that's about it for me today. If you like this video, then please give it a big thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments about today's video, then be sure to drop a comment in the comment section below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And yeah, if you haven't already, subscribe to Tech Yes City, brother, because there's gonna be more of this stuff coming every day. Truth, be careful of what you buy on eBay. I bought some 800 megahertz memory and it was only 667 megahertz and that caused me a lot of frustration when it came to overclocking this platform. A lot of frustration. That wasted time, it's not coming back. It's gone forever. But I did learn a lesson. Dude, like seriously, don't sing again, brother. <laughs> hey, you're watching the bloopers. I didn't force you to watch this section. It's only the beginning, but I've already gone and lost my mind. I feel like making days of chains and playing hide and seek. Did you hear that bit? The playing, playing. <laughs> Oh God, this is a tech video. That's right, this is a tech video. <laughs> More bloopers.